All right, guys. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Amp Caboose here, bringing you another video, another movie review. Oh, man. <laughs> so, as you can see from the title, we are reviewing probably one of the most anticipated films this summer. If this movie screws up, if the, if there was if there was enough weight on this movie's shoulder for it to do good, it is this time. It is like it has to be good because there is just no hope for DC films after this. That all they have is Batman after this. In my opinion, I believe because I don't think other than like Superman one and two, which came out long, long time ago, there hasn't been. Other than the Batman films, obviously, a good DC film. Now, I, I know there's a lot of people out there who probably enjoyed Superman Returns, but I honestly found it to be Lois Lane, the movie. <laughs> so without further ado, let's talk about Man of Steel. The movie starts off just visually beautiful. It starts just, you see Krypton. And you're literally, like, you're immersed into Krypton. It's almost as if you're like, wait, 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 wait. We're not going to see Krypton? We're not going to see Krypton anymore? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But honestly, like, this is the first time I've really ever seen a great portrayal of what what took place on Krypton, you know? And you don't just get, it's not like um, Russell Crowe's Jor-El, you know, it's not, he's he's not just, like, thrown in there as a cameo. No, he's he's almost in it the the whole like throughout the movie he's in it f majority of the time, and he is awesome. You know he's you really stand up for the guy and you can like you can really you can really feel for the guy and what he is trying to do and how he is trying to do it. Um, and it's just great the the first good chunk of the movie. You know this movie is about two and a half hours and the first good chunk of this movie takes place on Krypton, and it is. It is amazing. It's it's really visually beautiful, and it, it's like it's great. You definitely get a good look as to what it's like on Krypton and what's happening. But the moment Clark is sent to Earth, the moment you see him land, it literally cuts straight to him being an adult. Uh, all the 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 scenes of him as a child, it's all done through flashbacks, and that could be a bad thing, you know. And I gotta say, it wasn't incredible. Um, at times, like it around the beginning of the movie, it's just like it's just like okay, oh, wow, 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 this is great, this is great. But it's like they kind of put the the flashbacks really just out of context. You know, it has nothing to relate to the way um, Clark is feeling or what he has just experienced. Maybe in some uh, some points it does. But for the most part, it's kind of a little out of place and a little bit choppy. And I don't know. Uh, I still really do enjoy what happened in these flashbacks. And they were very entertaining and, you know, very emotional. And, uh, you know, they allow you to grasp what's going on in the scene. But they were put in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it didn't allow me to fully 100% enjoy them. Henry Cavill or Henry Cavill, whatever the hell you want to pronounce his name, he was he was a he was a good Superman. Um, wow. I mean, nowadays everybody's a British actor. Uh, actor. Um, so yeah, I believe he is. He's British or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so you know, he was he, he did pretty good. You know, there was a point in the movie where he had to play a very younger version of Clark Kent, and yeah, you know, he really did seem young at the time that he was portraying that young version of himself. And it was great, and you definitely, you know, he did a great job. I, that, that was good. Michael Shannon as Zod, though, I have to say, he was he was good. You know, like, there was some scenes where I'm like, D dude. <laughs> but for the most part, he isn't, like, it, I could see a lot of other people in that role, in my opinion. The Zod in Superman 2, ten times better than this, unfortunately. And guys, don't take this as bad things. This is me just nitpicking and just explaining some of the little gripes that I had throughout the movie. So, let's continue on. There's one last thing I just dislike about this movie. Is that there's a solid 45 minutes 
of just about nothing. <laughs> uh, it, you could feel that it's character development, but it's very slowly paced. But that is no problem because, my goodness, the amount of action in this movie, how could you complain? How could that be a con towards the, the, the this film? It's so amazing. It's so amazing. There is a solid the three quarters of the film is action, guys. Oh my goodness. And it's just like every punch, it's like sound waves and just you you feel them. They're not just like oh, he got punched through like 20 buildings. No. He got punched. The ground broke below them like th these buildings are flying and it's just my goodness, once again, it's visually beautiful. It's so amazing. And wow, just wow. Honestly, guys, just wow. Um, I mean, like, General Zod and Superman, you know, they, they have the, the... Superman, just... Oh, goodness gracious, guys. I'm at a loss for words at the action in this film. I cannot believe people complained about it. I can understand maybe if you didn't like too much action, but I'm down. <laughs> Do you want to throw too much action in there? Put as much as you want. I it was incredible. It was so good. Um, now I know a lot of people are gonna be asking, Caboose, please tell me there's an after credit scene, and unfortunately, guys, there isn't. Uh, I just, I'm just telling you, I'm not trying to spoil it or anything. There is no after the credit scene. I sat there, I waited, and the blue screen for the end of the film projector came up, and that was it. We left the theater. It's done. I'm saving you guys the time and the hope. <laughs> there is just no after credit scene. It's very unfortunate. DC has to take the next step, and they're just not willing to. Um, but... Without an after credit scene, there was a lot of room for Easter eggs throughout the film. I saw Wayne Tech somewhere. I saw Lex Corp signs. I saw there was a reference to a dude who a lot of people hate in the DC universe because they think that he's some loser. And uh, most of you who know who he is, uh, he's freaking awesome in the new 52. I'll say that much. Um, and. You'll get the reference. I mean, if you really do read the New 52 or if you know who this character is, you'll kind of get the reference. It may be very little, and it may be me just, you know, being a bit far-fetched, but I truly believe that it was a reference. So, yeah, if I could rate this film at a 5, 4.5 out of 5, like I said, there's a solid 45 minutes of absolutely nothing, and Michael Shannon as Zod isn't the most convincing villain that I've seen ever. He was still great but isn't the most convincing. Moving on, guys. You know I always do these spoiler parts, so if you don't want to see, or if you haven't seen Man of Steel, don't, don't watch. <laughs> Click off the video now, all right? If you don't give a shit, just keep watching, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, I'm giving you three seconds. Three, two, one. All right, moving on. Let's get into the into the tip, tip, tip. <laughs> Let's get into the spoiler heavy stuff in this movie. One thing I really can say that I'm so in between with is what Superman did to Zod at the end of the movie. So, if you really don't give a shit and you're listening to the spoilers, Zod is about to kill a family with the lasers, but instead of Superman just like smashing his face in the ground which kind of seemed more logical at the time he breaks his neck and the only reason this could be a gripe to a lot of people is very similar to what they did with the mandarin because it just completely goes against that character the mandarin in iron man 3 is not some drunk dude named trevor and superman in man of steel it, he is not someone to kill no 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 superman does not kill people and that will upset a lot of fans and i can understand that in my opinion, though, the scene was handled very well. When he broke his neck, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I was like, it, it, hair stuck up on the back of my neck. I was, I was pretty into it. And 
you know, it, it caught me and it was a good scene to me. But I know that a lot of people are going to be very upset with that scene because Superman just does not kill. Um, a lot of spoiler things I can say. The way, um, the way Clark Kent, you know, Papa Kent, the way he dies is very, very, it's a very, very emotional scene. And it had me just going, no, just, just live, just, just, just break the rules, just break the rules. And I know when I watch this movie twice, I'm still going to be very intense with that scene because I like, you know, when you have that moment where you know this dude's going to die, but you're like, wait, maybe... Maybe by, like, some act of God, the film will change in this very moment, and he won't die. <laughs> so, you know, you always have that feeling where you just kind of got that edge of your seat stuff, and you're just like, he's going to die now, he's going to die now, he's going to die now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was very it was very emotional. Um, the way Jor-El died, Russell, Cl- Russell Crowe was, like, simple. <laughs> uh, anything else I could really say about this movie, I don't know. I'm just I'm really upset there was... There wasn't a really big push for them to just, you know, give us the hint that, hey, Justice League is happening, guys. Or, hey, you know, um, we're ready to go. We're, like, any. it could have been anything. It could have just been, like, just a bigger hint towards Bruce Wayne. I don't know. Once again, four and a half out of five. This is a great movie. Do not listen to Rotten Tomato critics unless they're giving it a fresh rating because they, they – you can't complain that a film has too much action. That is just dumb. There's, you can't say, oh, there's not enough emotion. Everyone went into Man of Steel knowing who Superman is. That's why that 45 minutes of nothing bothered me. Because I already know who he is. I already know. Oh, Krypton blew up. He goes to the Forge of Solitude. He becomes Superman. He's a freaking badass. You know, I don't need to see that take place. Over such a long time, which it did. Um, nevertheless, go though, guys. Four point five out of out of five. You got to go see this movie to obviously ensure your own opinion about it. I can totally understand if people dislike this movie because there's a lot of things to dislike that go against the character of who Superman is. Um, but I just personally enjoyed this movie a ton. Hope you enjoyed this review. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later.